السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أنبياء الله جميعا وعلى سيدهم وخاتمهم حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين سيما سيدنا ومولانا الإمام الحجة بن الحسن المهدي المنتظر عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويطوف عليهم ولدان مخلدون إذا رأيتهم حسبتهم لؤلؤا منثورا صدق الله العلي العظيم So in continuation of our study of the description of paradise in the Holy Quran, tonight we reach one of the important subjects. What is it? Huh? What is it? Huh? Wildan al Mukhaladun, inshallah. The immortal, immortal youth of paradise. Last night we spoke about Hur al Ain. And of course, men were very excited, they went home happy. <laughs> but tonight we have to <laughs> implement justice. So, who are, who are the Wildan al Mukhaladun? Who are they? Wildan al Mukhaladun are mentioned three times in the Quran. Three times. In Surah Al Waqi'ah, Surah Al Insan, and Surah Al Tur. Surah Al Waqi'ah and Surah Al Insan uses the term Wildan al Mukhaladun. But Surah Al Tur uses a different term, a different name. Do you remember it? uses Ghilman, which is almost the same. Almost the same. Ghilman and Wildan are almost the same, meaning youthful, youthful people. They are youth, they are young. And sometimes they are strong. So what is the purpose of Wildan al Mukhaladun? What do they do in paradise? What is their job? Last night when we were speaking about Hurul Ain, most of you, all of you realized what Hurul Ain are going to do. What is their importance and significance? So what is the role of Wildan al Mukhaladun in paradise? Is it exactly similar to Hurul Ain? It's more, it's less. What is it? Same? Exactly the same, same service, same function, same role. Yes or no? Who says yes? Who says no? So how they are different than Hur al Ain? How they are different? Only different in 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 gender. One of them. Hur al Ain are females and Wildan al are male. So only the difference is in, is in gender or there is something else. Their role, their duty is also different. The role is different. How the role is different? They serve and Hur al Ain they do not serve. <laughs> Definitely they serve. They all serve, alhamdulillah. Otherwise, you don't put her in front of you and you watch her. She serves. <laughs> now, maybe God knows. Maybe the role is the same. The function, the duty is the same. But Quran has different ways of expression. Quran is very polite. Quran is a book of discipline, a book of morality, a book of chastity, a book of, a book of dignity. Quran does not use 
cheap expressions or cheap language. So maybe the Quran speaks in a different tone when it comes to each one of them, speaks differently to respect the social atmosphere, to respect the condition of the people, to maintain chastity and dignity. Iffa, it's called Iffa, Iffa and Najaba. Chastity is very important in Islam. So when it comes to Hur al Ain, he describes them. Inna ansha'na hunna insha'an, faja'alna hunna abkaran, uruban, atraban. So there are some descriptions. But when it comes to Wildan al Mukhaladin, there is not much description. There is some description. But when it comes to their role and their services, the Quran confines it in what? In serving food and a drink. But it does not elaborate further. Doesn't elaborate further. Now, do they have something else to offer? God knows. We cannot say because the Quran is silent about this. See what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Insan. وَيَطُوفُ عَلَيْهِمْ يَطُوفُ عَلَيْهِمْ means wait upon them. Yani they circulate. Tawaf. Tawaf. Circumambulation. Circulates. They are not sitting idle. Circulate upon the people of paradise, men and women. Men and women, when they sit, they converse, they speak, they socialize. So they need someone to serve them. And what is the first thing they need in paradise? Hamudi, قاعد الهذا قاعد تزل أبو أمه بسرعة. What is the first thing they need in paradise? Huh? Fruit. The first thing when you reach home, what is the first thing you need to do? Drink. Drinks is more important than food. In Ramadan, we can survive the whole day with no food, but it's very difficult when you are thirsty. Most of us, we get thirsty during Ramadan, not hungry. Very few get hungry, but mostly the biggest obstacle is the water. So the first thing people need is the drink and then the food after that. And they need someone to serve them. Why someone to serve them? Because their attention, the attention of people of paradise goes to what? To conversation, they want to speak to each other. They don't want to st stop and go and interrupt the conversation and go and get some drink, some food. They need someone to be there. This is why in some fine restaurants, Expensive restaurants, why they are very expensive? Is it just the quality of the food or, or something else? The service, sometimes the quality of food is not that much different. And the quantity of food, they give you little food in fine restaurants. They don't bring you whole chilo kebab, you know, which, which is for five people. They don't do that. They bring you samples, small. But the difference is in the service. The service, there are people, waiters, waitresses, Standing there, coming to you. Are you enjoying the food? How can I help you? Do you eat something? So this is what we need in paradise. The service is important. Young, youthful, and mukhalladun. Mukhalladun means what? Immortal and non-aging. They don't age. Sometimes the waiter, the waitress, they get tired. When they work in a restaurant, in the beginning they are strong and fresh. But after five hours, six hours, seven hours, they get tired. They get tired. They don't have exactly the same quality of service that they had earlier in the day or in the night. They get tired. But those people, they don't get tired. They don't get tired. They are always strong, always energetic, always ready, always fresh. And they do not age because we age. Human being age. You yourself, your energy today is different than your energy last year. It is different than your energy six months ago. 
not just last year, six months ago. You are not the same person. You don't have the same energy. This Ramadan, your energy is different from last Ramadan. You have less energy this year. Next year, you're going to have even less energy than this year. I'm telling you. And this is how God designed this life. We age. We age because we have to move to our next destination. We age. And everything in us ages too. Those will dan al they never age. They never same age, same energy, same readiness. Once you see them, you suppose them to be what? Hasiptahum Lu'an Pearl scattered pearl. Have you seen pearl? Have you seen the artificial or the genuine one? Which one do you see? We don't see the genuine one. We see the Japanese one, the artificial one, man-made. We don't see the one that is extracted from the bottom of the sea, the bottom of the ocean. We don't see it. Or maybe in the, in the museums, we see some of them. So pearl is so breathtaking, so beautiful, and so clean and immaculate and bright. So Allah says, when you see them in paradise, you see Wildan al mukhaladun they are like a scattered Scattered all over, scattered pearl. And this also a reference to what? To their beauty, to their elegance, and to what else? Reference to what? Reference to what? Beauty, elegant, and what? And the quantity too. They are plenty, plenty. So whenever you turn your face, someone is standing ready. He says, how can I help you? Who is the father of this son, the father and the mother? Does he have a father and mother? Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. We have, we have a place, a space for them upstairs, please. Take them upstairs. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So they are like scattered pearls. Beautiful of you, and they are in, in big quantity, in big numbers there. So this is one, one verse in the Quran. The second one, Surah Al-Waqi'ah, يَطُوفُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلْدَانٌ مُخَلَّدُونَ بِأَكْوَابٍ وَأَبَارِيقَ وَكَأْسٍ مِنْ مَعِينٍ لَا يُصَدَّعُونَ عَنْهَا وَلَا يُنْزِفُونَ Again, it says the role is when you are eating and drinking, they bring the trays and the goblets, the cups made of gold and filled with what? The drink is ma'een. When you drink it, do you, do you feel thirsty? You don't feel thirsty anymore. And this is a reference to the wine. Why? Because the ayah after that says, explains, لَا يُصَدَّعُونَ عَنْهَا when they drink this special wine of paradise, do they get headache after that? They don't get headache. Yusadda'un comes from suda' and suda' is what? Is headache. Wala yunzifun. Wala yunzifun means what? What does it mean? Wala yunzifun. They don't get, they don't get intoxicated, ahsan. They don't get intoxicated. So again, this is presented by them, by Wildan al Mukhalladun. And another verse, Surah Al Tur, speaks about Ghilman, wa amdadnahum bifakihatin, wa lahmim mimma yashtahun. We supply them with the fruits and their choice of meat, wa lahmim mimma yashtahun, your desire, your choice of meat. Yatanaza'una fiha. Tanazu' here is they. They, no, no, no. Tanazu here in this context, it means they pass to one another the cup. The people of paradise, they give one another. Yatanaza'una fiha ka'san, a cup. La laghwun fiha wa la ta'theem. Special wine they give to each other, they serve each other. There is no laghu. What is laghu? Laghu. 
احسنت ايفري ايدل توك از لغو ايفري توك ويتش هاز نو بينيفيت بت ات هاز هارم از كولد لغو لغو ان فاكت لغو از ذا اكسترا توك اند وين ذا توك بيكومز اكسترا از ات جوينج تو بي بينيفيشال اور هارمفول اولويز هارمفول اولويز هارمفول وين وي سبيك مور ذان وات وي نيد It's not going to be of benefit. So this is لغو. لا لغو فيها ولا تأثيم. No incitement to sin. Much of the talk that we do has incitement to sin, to backbiting, to lie, to exaggeration, to other things. So this is the cup that they pass to each other. ويطوف عليهم and also wait upon them and circulate upon them. غلمان لهم youths for them كأنهم لؤلؤ مكنون they are like hidden pearls in this context it's غلمان which is also a reference to ولدان المخلدون and it is in the context of serving them serving the people of جنة now another reason why Quran uses غلمان Here, the Arabs at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam, whenever they had guests, important guests, they don't let their servants. They used to have a slaves, slaves, male and female, but when there is an important guest coming, they don't. allow the servant to serve him or her they would they would ask their own children why why they ask their own children to serve special guests out of respect they want their children to learn also to learn generosity to learn how to respect the guest and also to get involved in the conversation this is a way of training your children They wanted the children not to play in the street, but to come while they are serving the guests, serving them, they converse with them. They converse with them. This is why they were keen on bringing their young children. Nowadays, your young children are not with you. Parents, they come to the masjid, their children are not with them. Parents go to visit a relative, a friend, the children are somewhere else. Tonight, when we finish, inshallah, We have another session for the youth. They begin at 10.30 here. They don't come with the adults. They, they want their own sovereignty, their own independence. They don't go with their parents. This is why they don't learn. When they are not with their parents, they miss many things. They miss good traditions, good customs. They, they miss adab and manners. They really miss, miss these things. Where do you learn adab? You learn it from Hollywood? You learn it in the night club. You learn it in the high school. Where do you learn it? You learn it from your parents. We all learned, if we are mu'addab today, we learn this from our families, our elders, our mothers, our fathers. So they were keen on bringing their ghilman, young boys, to serve the guest and to be with them and socialize so they can grow and they can learn. And also to keep them separated from women. Because if a boy spends his time always around women and with women, he becomes what? He becomes what? Sissy. He becomes sissy. He, st he starts behaving like females, like girls, not like a man. He does not learn chivalry, magnanimity, rujula. He becomes timid. He becomes soft. When he speaks soft, when he moves soft, this is, this is not good for his future. So they keep them away from women. They bring them to the men's session to learn, to prepare them for the future. And remember, remember, nowadays, we don't have any physical activities. Once you leave here, are you going to walk home? How are we going to get home tonight? You drive. How many steps we walk from here to our cars? Nothing. In the past, they used to walk. When you fight now, how do you fight? 
you bring your Nintendo and you start tick, 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 tick. This is how you're fighting, you know? In the past, they had a sword. Every family, every man had several swords. And to carry the sword, the sword was too heavy. Have you tried some of these swords nowadays? We cannot carry them. We don't have the strength because we were grown up doing nothing, temple, no exercise. But in the past, they ride the horse, the camel, and the horse runs with a fast speed. And so they learned these things. They were ready physically fit. We are not fit physically. We sit on the ground, on the floor for 10 minutes. We say, ah, kamaram, ah. We start screaming. <laughs> Why? Because of lack of exercise, lack of exercise. But in the past, they used to train them, prepare them, prepare them for the war, prepare them to carry the sword, to get in combat. So their lifestyle was different, was different. So in the same way that people would use their young ones to serve, Allah says in paradise, we will do the same. We will bring the young ones, Wildanul Mukhalladun and Ghilman to serve to serve the men and women in paradise. There are some misconceptions. Misconception number one, some scholars, they are not lay people scholars. They say, Ghilman, God created them for sexual relationship with men. This is what they believe in, but this is wrong. Absolutely wrong. There are some Sufis, this tendency is found with some, not all of them, some Sufis who maybe because they practice this in this life, they think that they're going to have the same thing in the next. So they say, Ghulman, God says Ghulman, you know. And you know, in some countries, my friends, in some countries, they have this term, Bachabazi. I, I, was, I was listening to NPR the other day, and PR had a special segment program on Bachabazi in Afghanistan and Pakistan, which is illegal and forbidden. This is forbidden. Homosexuality is forbidden in this life and in the hereafter. Any act which is shameful and indecent and immoral and against God's design and God's nature would be illegal here and illegal there too. There is a scholar called Shamsuddin al Zahabi. He died 675 years ago. He's Egyptian. He was born in Egypt and died in Damascus. And he is Mu'arikh historian. He is Hafiz and a narrator of hadith. Shamsuddin al Zahabi, very famous. He died almost 700 years ago, 675 years ago. He has a book called Tariq al-Islam. He is the student of Ibn Taymiyyah. Ibn Taymiyyah is the one who founded Salafism and Wahhabism, the radical version in Islam. Ibn Taymiyyah, Ahmed ibn Abdul Halim ibn Taymiyyah, he's Syrian, he's from Harran. Harran is outside Damascus. So this man, Shamsuddin al Dhahabi, is his student. And Ibn Kathir, another hardcore and hardline historian and mufassir, Ibn Kathir al Dimashqi, is his student, the student of Shamsuddin al Dhahabi. He says, this man in his book, Tariq al Islam, he says the first homosexual khalifa in the history of Islam was Al-Walid Al -Walid ibn Yazid ibn Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. He was a caliph in Damascus. He was Amir al muminin His title was Amir al muminin And he was sitting, you know, in the chair of the Prophet, succeeding the Prophet. People call him Amir al muminin Khalifa al-Muslimin from Bani Umayyah, specifically from Bani Marwan. Al-Walid ibn Yazid ibn Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. He was homosexual. He says in his book. And he says, the way he describes him, 
He says, Al Khalifa Tul Fasiq Abu Abbas. This is how he mentions him. Shamsuddin al Dhahabi in his book. He says, Al Khalifa Tul Fasiq, immoral, immoral, indecent, Fasiq, evildoer. So he is the one, the first one who introduced homosexuality. And they write about him. So, well, Danul Mukhalladun are not for that business. Now, are they going to have women? Women, our women in paradise, inshallah, when they go to paradise, are they going to marry Wildan al Mukhalladun? Maybe if she's single, yes. But if she's, if she's married either to her husband or to someone else, would she be able to marry Wildan al Mukhalladun? What do you think? Yes or no? No? Allah knows. We really don't know. There is no clear answer on this. No clear answer. God knows. Are things going to change there? Our programming is going to change. Yesterday I read a verse in the Quran, Surah Al-Rahman. فِيهِنَّ قَاصِرَاتُ الطَّرْفِ لَمْ يَطْمِثْهُنَّ إِنْسٌ قَبْلَهُمْ وَلَا جَانٌ Reference, a reference to Hur al not to women. Huh? We have two types of females in paradise. We have Hur al and we have regular women. A reference to Hur al it says that their look, their interest, their desire is focused on their husbands only. Qasirat al tarf They have restricted gaze. Qasirat al-Tarf. Restricted on what? On whom? On their husbands only. This is regarding Hur al -in. Allah says Hur al -in will be for you. Nobody is going to share that with you. Exclusively their best, as they say, their best for you. But how about women tomorrow? We, ha we don't have a verse in the Quran that says women are, you know, only for you. Maybe it would be, maybe. But there is no explicit reference to this. Maybe another reference which is implicit, where is it in the Quran? In Surah Al-Baqarah. Which verse in Surah Al-Baqarah? That says maybe women are only for their husbands. In Surah Al-Baqarah, the beginning, beginning of the Surah. Remember when you started the Quran in the beginning of the month? First day, you started reading. First juzuk. وَلَهُمْ فِيهَا أَزْوَاجٌ مُطَهَّرَةٌ وَهُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدٌ In paradise, mu'mineen, the community of the faithful, their wives are going to be purified. Maybe. This is a reference that your wife is only for you, purified. Maybe. So God knows we will wait and say, Allah, wait, be patient a few days, you know. We will see. We will see the right answer when we arrive in paradise, inshallah. So, وَلَهُمْ فِيهَا أَزْوَاجٌ مُطَهَّرَةٌ وَهُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Now, another question. Is there going to be bachelorhood in paradise? Someone says, Male or female, I don't want to get married. I want to be by myself, single, bachelor. What do you think? Yes or no? No? Why no? You are not free there? Free. You are free. So yes or no? Yes? No? MashaAllah. Keep saying no because sometimes... When I ask, it doesn't mean, you know, I want you to think about what you say. No, there is no bachelorhood. There is no person in paradise who is a'zab, has no partner. Why? Why? Why people remain single in this life? Men and women who remain single, who don't get married. Mm -hmm. Yes, one, one answer, they could not find a good partner. What is the other answer? 
The other answer, sometimes some ladies, they abstain from getting married because when she sees her sister or sisters, they had bad marriage, bad relationship with their husbands. Husbands were abusive. She says, I'm not going to get married. Some people come and ask her for marriage. They ask her for marriage, but she says no. Why? Because they have phobia. They develop phobia. They don't want to have the same fate, the same misery. She says, I, I maintain my independence, my dignity. I have my home, my money, my career, my friends, my travels, my food, my vacation. Why should I be under a man who wants to dictate on me what to do? Who wants to curtail my freedom? Who wants to abuse me mentally, physically abuse me? I don't want marriage. And this is what is happening in many families, many families. Many young girls, they are now in their 30s and 40s. They have phobia of marriage. And many men too, not just females. Many men, he says, I saw how my father suffered, my brother suffered. I don't want marriage. This is in this dunya. It happens. But in the akhirah, it's a different story. There is no more abuse. There is no more zulm and wrongdoing. There is no more, no more someone taking advantage of you. Therefore, you have a psychological need to be with someone. A psychological, whether you are male or female, you need to be with a partner. And then in paradise here, the difference between marriage here and marriage in paradise do you, despite working hard and hard and hard to find the best partner, do you at the end find the best partner? Huh? Never. Never. You don't find. We have to compromise. When it comes to marriage, you have to lower the bar. If you don't lower the bar, you are going to remain single for the rest of your life. Marriage is about compromise. Because the one that you are marrying is a human being like you. And when we are a human being, it means what? Do we have mistakes or not? Do we have weaknesses or not? So there is no perfect marriage in this life. No perfect. This is an illusion. An illusion. No perfect marriage. But in paradise, there will be perfect marriage. Because we don't have any weaknesses, any shortcomings, any deficiencies. We don't have. So the marriage is going to be healthy and, and happy and strong. And always you are in state of honeymoon. Always, always. Because your wife is always, you know, mashallah, you know, she's always uh, fresh and, and good and, and her akhlaq is good and your akhlaq is good. So when there is no deficiency in our manners, in our relationship, then the, the love is going to continue. The respect is going to continue. And you're going to marry the best, the best choice there. The one that you choose. The hadith says in paradise, you're going to be given the option. Either staying with your partner who was with you in this life. Or you say, no, khalas. Khalas, enough is enough. I want some change. So you say to her, Ultimasa dua, inshallah, may Allah find you someone good and leave me alone. And she would say the same to you. So either you stay together or you go with the one that you love. See, my friends, in this life, sometimes a man loves a lady from his childhood and he dreams about marrying her because, you know, she was in the neighborhood and, and you know, his, his cousin, his friend. His, but then when they get to the age of 20, 25, they are not going to end up marrying each other. She will go to someone else. After 20 years of being in love, she would marry someone else and he will marry someone else. We say, there is a term used here. We say, qisma, qisma. Marriage is not only your decision. It is your decision plus... God's decision. And sometimes God says, this is not good for you. I know you've been thinking of her. I know you as a female been thinking of him to be your husband for 20 years. But I know it's not good for you. So let go of that.
So you are not, you end up not marrying what you love, who you loved. You end up marrying someone else. But in paradise, you will end up marrying the one you love and you dream of. The one of your choice. They are not going to tell you, no, sorry, that would not happen. Whoever you, you love, you're going to marry, inshallah ta'ala. So prepare yourself from now and make your homework. Now, the lady who did not marry in this life, she remained single. Or the one who got divorced. Who is she going to marry tomorrow in paradise, inshallah? Hmm? She remained single in this life. Or she was divorced. And she died. When she died, she had no husband. Who is she going to marry? Hmm? The Imam? Ghalma? So, <laughs> so she is going to marry. The hadith says, تَتَزَوَّجُ مَنْ تَشَاءُ مِنَ الرِّجَالِ Whoever she likes, whether they are غِلْمَان, as the lady says, or, or, or ولدان المخلدون, or the men who are available there. Whoever she wishes and she loves in paradise. Now, if someone had multiple marriages in this life. For instance, she was married, then her husband died, then she was remarried, the second husband died, then she was remarried, the third one died, alhamdulillah. <laughs> Who she is going to marry next in the hereafter? The first one, the second one, the third one? Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. No, seriously, she had multiple marriages. The first one she's going to marry, her choice. The hadith says she's going to marry the last one. The last one that she saw. Or if she says no, she's not forced, of course. Then she's going to marry the man of her choice, inshallah ta'ala. So, what is the last question here? I said yesterday, yesterday I said, do we have religious obligations in paradise? Meaning, do we have a set of ibadat, worshipping, this is haram, this is wajib, this is mandatory, you cannot miss this. These are prayers, these are fasting, this is zakat, this is whatever, this is haram, this is don't eat, don't touch, don't see. Do we have these restrictions? No restrictions whatsoever in paradise. No restriction. An abode of full, full freedom and full choice. No restriction. We've been told by our imams that the only worshipping, the only act of ibadah that you practice there is to glorify and sanctify God. Is to say, because this is an enjoyment. Here it might not be an enjoyment. Here, sometimes we pray, we don't enjoy it. I speak to many people, especially young people. They say, we pray because we don't want to go to Jahannam. We pray, but we are not enjoying the prayers. We cannot concentrate. We cannot focus. We cannot enjoy the prayers. We cannot understand it. We read the Quran, but we don't enjoy. We read the dua, we don't enjoy. We fast, but we don't enjoy. We fast because it's a burden. We have to get... Get, get away with it. But, but we, we don't have a choice. In paradise, you are not going to do these things. In paradise, when you sanctify God, it's like a sweet in your mouth. It's like eating sweet, eating chocolate that you desire. And what is the prayers, special para prayers of paradise? Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. So this is the sweetness of paradise inshallah we will go there inshallah we will enjoy hurul ain and well done al mukhalladun what what is what 
one of the partners, if, if he ends up in hell, most likely he ends up in hell, she would recite Fatiha for him. Bro. I don't know. I, I really don't know. But Quran says, Quran says in chapter 66, some wives are going to depart from their husbands. Regarding the wives of Nuh and Lut, وَقِيلَتْ خُلَ النَّارَ مَعَ الدَّاخِلِينَ Nuh and Lut are going to go to paradise. Their wives, right in front of their eyes, are sent to Jahannam. Now, whether God is going to put them there for some time, for a few years, and then take them out, we really don't know. But God says, وَقِيلَ They have to taste fire. They have to ex uh, experience fire. وَقِيلَ تْخُلَ النَّارَ مَعَ الدَّاخِلِينَ They have to enter fire. Now, whether after that they're going to be pardoned by Allah, We've been told, my friends, that only four people are going to remain in the hellfire, ma damat is samawatu wal earth, eternally. The rest, even the guilty, even the criminals, even the bad ones, they're going to serve their sentence and then they're going to be pardoned and taken out. But only four are going to remain there. And God is going to say, close the gate of Jah. Have you seen here when we put the deceased in his grave? There is a concrete cover. Have you seen? Have you been to a cemetery? They put that concrete cover. Nobody was going to open it. This is what happened to them. To those four who are going to stay in the bottom of the hellfire. The rest are going to... Now, how long are we going to... Some people are going to serve. Some of them one year. Some of them ten. Some of them a hundred years. But even one minute is unbearable. Don't tell me 10 years is okay, I can do that. No, not even one minute of Nar Jahannam. Not even one minute. And in this month, we have to seek refuge. And Salatul Layl, the most important part of the Salat, Tahajjud is the Qunut, the most important. And the most important sentence in the Qunut. Allahumma hadha maqamul aidhi bika min al nar. Here at this moment in this prayers, I seek refuge in you from the hellfire. Seek refuge from Allah. Seek refuge. Before you ask him paradise, ask him forgiveness from, from hellfire. Because we cannot. Allah, Imam Ali says, Wa hadha ma la taqumu lahu as samawatu wal ard. Heaven and earth cannot stand for one flame of hellfire. So, he, inshallah, inshallah, you're going to be joined with your, with your spouse there. And this is what the Quran promised that those who do good, alhaqna bihim, dhurriyatahum, wa ma alatnahum min amalihim min shay, kullum ri'im bima kasaba raheen. Inshallah, you will be. But sometimes you will both be in paradise, but you are not going to be in the same neighborhood. So a husband and wife, they could both go to paradise, but they don't see each other. I think this is the best solution, my friends. <laughs> this is the best solution. Mu'amineen, three points before I conclude. On Monday, we're going to have, I don't know whether it's partial or, or full eclipse. Here it's partial, in this state it's partial. In, 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 in Mexico, in, in Texas, in other states, it would be full. So, so uh, there is Salatul Ayat, which is mandatory. Do you know what time the eclipse begins here in this area? 10.30 a.m. So from 10.30 a.m. it lasts for two hours, two and a half hours. How long it lasts? Do you know how long it lasts? It should be about two or two and a half hours. So within this period, time frame, we have it's, man, it's, it's mandatory, mandatory to perform Salatul Ayat. Mandatory. And if you miss it during these two, three hours, you were asleep, you were busy, you didn't notice, then you can do Qadha, you can make it up. So Salatul Ayat is very simple, my friends, very, very simple. Salatul Ayat consists of two rak'ah. When you begin, of course, the niyyah is that you are performing Salatul Ayat, Qurbatan Allah Ta'ala, you say Allahu Akbar, you recite Surah Fatiha Al-Kitab, Surah Al-Hamd. After that, 
you have five ruku' each rak'ah, each unit bears five ruku' so after you finish Surah Al-Hamd you may read a full chapter for instance قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ full chapter الله الصمد لم يلد ونم يولد ونم يكن له كفون أحد or قُلْ أعوذ برب ال or قُلْ أعوذ برب الفلق قُلْ أعوذ برب الناس إِنَّا أَعْطَيْنَاكَ الْكَوْثَرْ and then go to ruku' and then stand read another chapter either the same chapter or another one and then go to ruku' you do this five times so how many surahs you read five surahs or you can divide one surah into five sections for instance قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ which alhamdulillah you all memorize by heart alhamdulillah rabbil alameen قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ you can divide it into five sections so after you finish surah al-hamd say بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم go to ruku' and then you stand قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ ruku' stand الله الصمد then you go to ruku' this is the third ruku' you stand لم يلد ولم يولد the fourth you stand and then you go to the fifth and, and you say the fifth section which is وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفْ وَنَحَدْ go to ruku' and then after ruku' what do you do here? sujood how many sujood? two two sujood and then you stand and you do exactly what you did in the second unit second rak'ah you do exactly what you did in the first rak'ah and this is how you finish salatul ayat the second thing mu'mineen Zakatul Fitr is mandatory. Today, many people asked me, I was not fasting. My wife was not fasting. So should she pay? If you don't fast, yes. Even if you don't observe the fast of Ramadan, you must pay this type of zakat. Zakatul Abdan. It's called Zakatul Abdan. Zakatul Fitr. Which is $15 per person. $15 here in Orange County. Maybe in... Other areas in America, cheaper areas, it could be $10. But where we live here, the standard of living, it's $15 per person. So the, the breadwinner, is the breadwinner the father or the mother? Whoever is the breadwinner or the son or the daughter sometimes. The daughter in the family, she's the breadwinner, not the father, not the mother. She's the one who's taking care of the bills, the expenses, so the breadwinner has to pay on behalf of himself or herself and on behalf of those that he covers under his wing. But if the child, the daughter, the son are independent, they live somewhere else. They are independent. They have their own income, so you don't cover them. But if they live in the same house, or even if they don't live in the same house, you send them the money. They, they study. They are in the East Coast, but you send them the money then you have to pay on their behalf, $15 per person. Now, if the wife is pregnant with a baby, should we pay for that baby or not? Yes, yes. Even if the baby is one month old, then, and the wife knows that she's pregnant, then you pay on, the, on behalf of that baby. One more thing. If you are the breadwinner and you have many members in your household and you take care of their expenses one of them god forbids one of them says i'm not even a muslim i don't believe in god should we pay on his behalf or not yes even if he's an atheist we should pay on his behalf now if Tuesday night, which is the night of Eid, and Wednesday is the day of Eid, Tuesday night, someone came to your house before Maghrib, before the Adhan, let's say Adhan, uh, Tuesday will be 7.31 p.m. in Irvine's time, 7.31. So he comes to your home before Maghrib, not after Maghrib. If he comes after Maghrib, no. But if he comes before Maghrib, before 7.31, let's say he arrives 7.30 p.m. to your house and he stays, whether he stays for coffee or dinner or nothing. He's, you know, you are both Netflixing that night, let's say. Would you be responsible for his fitra? Yes, even if he's rich. But since he landed in your house that night, he became your guest, so you have to pay. 
Now, should he be Shia Muslim or any guest? Any guest. Any guest. So please don't open the door. <laughs> Go and buy a ring, you know? There is a ring. And a store ring tonight. So don't open the door until after the Adhan. Let them stay here. Stay outside. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't take me serious. <laughs> Astaghfirullah Rabbi So, but if they come to your house as guests, then you have to pay for the fitrah. This is why, alhamdulillah, Tuesday night, our program is going to be 8.45 p.m. here in the masjid. No one comes before Maghrib because there is no iftar. The last iftar, inshallah, is going to be tomorrow, Saturday. So let's see you, inshallah, at the last iftar. And after we finish the iftar, we're going to remove all these covers, inshallah, in a preparation for Salatul Eid. But then we continue the program on Sunday, to, uh, Monday and Tuesday. And inshallah, Wednesday, 8 a.m. sharp, we begin the Salat. So by 9, we finish, inshallah, because our neighbors, they have... You know, they work, they have businesses here, and we want, we have to be respectful to all of them. Allahumma khfar al mu'minina wal mu'mina. Do you have any question on, on uh, Zakatul Fitr? On Eid? On Wildan al Mukhalladun? Yeah? What, what is it? <laughs> yes. Zahabi, yes. Is, is he the one? Rumi, it could be, he was, he died 700 years ago and he traveled extensively. He, he went to Iran, he went to Iraq, he went to Egypt, to Syria, Bilad al-Sham. He was born in Egypt, he died in Damascus, but he traveled to Mecca, to Medina, maybe. In Syria, in Damascus, it could be him, yes, it could be him. Any other, yes. This is, uh, we don't want to speak about hellfire in Ramadan, inshallah. Yeah, we, we want only to, to focus on paradise. Yeah, their names are mentioned in the books. Uh, one, one second, listen, please. Uh -huh. No, no, unless, unless he says, I am taking care of my fitra, then it's okay. But if he doesn't, then you are responsible for that. Yes, yes, please. Yes. Say it in English, please, please. Say it in English. In a English, you begin. This is regarding resurrection. This is regarding hellfire and paradise. Aha, so he says the ayah in the Quran applies uh, applies to men and women, both. It could be Allah. Allah knows. I don't know. But but the hadith, when we read the hadith and also some verses in the Quran, we and, and the Prophet, when the Prophet went during the Mi'raj, the trip of Mi'raj ascension, he saw with his own eyes, he saw male and female in paradise. He, the Prophet himself, when he came back, he said, I saw males and females, two genders, not one gender. Uh, this is open for discussion. Any other question regarding fitra? Yes. Will Dan Mukhaladu? Inshallah, next year we will talk about this. If you wait, yeah. In Jannah or in, in Jahannam? Jahannam next year, inshallah. Next year we will speak about Jahannam. So I don't think I'll speak about Jahannam. No. 
Yeah, inshallah, we want to encourage people to do good. Allahumma khfar lil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat taqabbal minna salatana wa siyamana wa dua'ana munna ala mardana bil shifa'i wal afiyah wa ajjil fi faraj imamina wa sayyidina sahib al asri wal zaman wa ila arwah shuhada'i filistina wa gazza wa lubnan wa shuhada'i al mu'minina wal mu'minat thawab al fatiha ma'a salati ala muhammadin wa ali muhammad There is in about half an hour, leave the chairs because the youth are going to have their own session tonight. And we see you tomorrow, inshallah, at iftar time, inshallah.